Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another live stream here at my YouTube channel. Today's live stream is going to be a little bit different. I'm trying out a couple of things that I don't have much experience with, but I know you guys appreciate seeing these kind of try as we go type of live streams. So here we go. Today I'm going to be trying out the Spellbinders Better Press for the first time. They sent this to me back when it was first released and I just, I think it, I think it may have been right before holiday card series. I can't remember. Anyway, there were reasons why I never got to it. And then, um, yeah, so here we are. I'm intrigued by it. Thought I'd try it out for the first time. I've watched a few videos, but it was also like days ago and I did it, but we're going to try to, you know, fly by the seat of our pants and make this work. I'm also going to use watercolor paper with it instead of Spellbinders Better Press paper, which I've heard actually gives you the best results. So I have no clue if it's going to work. So uh, let's try it out. Oh. From what I understand, the Better Press should be really easy to use. <laughs> I watched Jennifer McGuire's video and she made it look really easy. So let's hope, right? Okay, so the first thing that Jennifer did was she took these little shims and I wanna say she just stuck them underneath. I don't know if I'll need them or not. Okay, and then I'm assuming you want, yeah, okay. You want the A7, A2, you want those to line up and then when it goes through the die cutting machine, it will compress this down and that's what actually prints it. Okay, so here are the designs that I was considering. And um, I think I'm just gonna go with this one. We're gonna keep it really simple. I'm hoping it works out. This is the a note from me to you press plate. I got this from simonsystamp.com. I ordered it last week. It came sometime this weekend. I was out of town. Um, and so I just got home and I picked up the mail this morning. I'm like, ooh, the better press stuff. So here we are. So this is the plate. And I, you know, here we go. This is like magnetic. Oh yeah, that does, that works great. Okay, so the sizing of it, I think I actually want to do an A7 card. So um, I'm like picturing my card here, A7. I want this pretty in the center with the words, you know, pretty spot on there. That looks great to me, I have no clue. I'm gonna prep the, let's see, I'm gonna prep my paper now. So this is going to go on here like this. So I'm going to lift it up, turn it this way, and I'm going to be attaching my paper on this side. I'm using this Artistry by Alta New pre-cut five by seven. This is their hot pressed watercolor paper. It's a little smoother than the cold press. I'm hoping that helps me. Jennifer had the Spellbinders yellow tape, so that's what I'm gonna go with. I figure most, like the paper that um, Spellbinders sells is like a thick, nice cotton paper, and a lot of watercolor papers are, you know, have those same properties, so that is really hard to see. Hold on, with my black mat, I'm gonna put some white paper underneath, just so, I mean, yes, it's gonna help you see what I'm doing, but really, I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, I had it pretty close. I'm not, you know, this design is not gonna be anywhere near the corner, so I don't have to worry about it. I probably could actually just use a couple, couple pieces of tape, but that's okay. Okay, so now, I believe this is, this was like the ink pad that they sent me. This was like a prototype of the Better Press. So I think this is just black. I guess I could just test it really quick on a post-it note. Oh yeah, that's, mm, that kind of looks like navy. In fact, my ink pad might be a little dry, so we'll make sure I ink this up really well. Okay, so then you're supposed to like, oh yeah, my ink pads are really dry. This is not good. Well, crap. See, this is what happens when I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying other things. Okay, so I'm gonna do some watercolor paper over the top, so I need to use a waterproof ink. I have no clue if this is gonna work. I'm just gonna use my old standby, some VersaFine and we're gonna try it. We'll see. Oh yeah, that's totally transferring much better. Oh my word, I don't even have my die cutting machine ready. This is gonna be a disaster. Okay, 
this is just a try run. I'm going to do this. And I don't have my die cutting machine over here, but I do have it. I just have to move it over. Okay. And then you just run it through. Okay, here we go. That didn't seem like it did anything. Did it do anything? That was a little too easy. Carefully picking this up. Oh, I am pleasantly surprised. That is lovely. <laughs> Can you guys see this? Oh my word. I totally understand Jennifer's excitement when she used her better press for the first time. That's gorgeous. I have been sleeping on this. I am not one of those like early adopters of things. Ultrasound cleaner. Yes, I do have that. I'll clean that. I'll start cleaning it with that after here. I'm done here. This was so easy. I'm like, why only do one? For real, do like many. Magnets are so great. Snaps right in place. Roll this through. Oh my word, is it really that easy? What in the world? Okay, it's like flawless. That is so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna stop at just these two because we need to move on. Um, because I have a feeling that what I want to do with this might take a minute. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm gonna move on from that. But I've got two perfect designs ready to go. Wow. Okay. So that was the first thing that I wanted to try today. Let's get these, let's get this cleaned up. Someone said um, ultra clean stamp cleaner works well. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm just using the Simon Says Stamp one. And this stuff is so oily and messy and I hate it all over my hands. So I'm gonna use two baby wipes. I'm gonna spray it into the baby wipes. And then, well, it's taking it off, that's for sure. It's kind of making a mess of everything else that's here, but it is cleaning it, so that's good. All right, I'm just gonna try to clean this as much as I can. And then I'll, oh, it is cleaning it up really well. Good call, Molly. Cleaning it up as much as I can, and then I will lift up that plate and then clean this gray mat, the, the magnetic part. I'm gonna continue cleaning this. Well, it's not perfect, but that's okay. So I'm going to do just like really simple watercolor flowers. Well, I'll see you do watercolor flowers. Maybe I should stamp them and then color them. I don't know. I was thinking of just doing some freeform flowers, trying to keep it simple. Yeah, let's do that. We'll just do some freeform flowers and keep it really simple today. I also found another watercolor artist on Instagram. Seriously, Instagram algorithm knows me. They know I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Um, anyway, I I think her Instagram name is Colors by Sue, and I was so taken with her cute cat watercolors with flowers and all that that I went to her Etsy shop and like bought some of her original paintings that I'm going to hopefully put up in my office. I will show them to you, hold on. They're so cute. And when you see them, you'll know why I had to get them. And you might be cr like thinking like, why would you buy cards by someone else when you can make them? Y'all, I support all artists. And if they're doing cute things with cats and flowers, <laughs> you know I'm gonna buy it. Okay, look at this. Look how cute. Now, my friend Jana has kind of like a brownish tabby cat that looks like this cat. So I think when's, when's Jana's birthday? Didn't she just have it? Anyway, I'm gonna save it for Jana's birthday. Or maybe I'm just gonna give it to Jana when it's not her birthday and just gonna be like, hey, this looks like your cat, Gracie. 
you know, awesome. And it is, yes, colorsbysue.etsy.com. How cute is that? Okay, stop it. It's like she knows me. It's like she knows me, right? I mean, how, how did she like reach into my head? <laughs> okay, and then this last one, aren't those flowers so cute? So I was thinking I could even do some like inspired by flowers for these cards with those type of flowers because they look like pretty, they could be really fun because they're a little funky and whimsical. They don't have to be exact. So I could probably get some flowers that look a little bit like that. Just as an homage to Sue and her amazing art. Isn't that cute? Okay, the prints I got, okay, stop it. Okay, first of all, she has amazing flowers. Look at this. And this is an original. I'm like, all of that detail, how in the world? So beautiful. I think she might even have an Instagram reel, reel while she's painting this one. Like she shows how she painted it. I just love her illustration style. The colors are so great. It's amazing. All right, and then I got this one, which I mean, hello. <laughs> They're all silver tabby cats. So I'm basically just gonna have a little shrine <laughs> to Colors by Sue with all of her cute cat paintings. I'm like, seriously, like, come on. Okay, and then this one is on her Instagram. Stop it. Stop it. It's so dang cute. They're Christmas kitties. So I'm totally going to have to get this framed and put it up in my craft room during Christmas time. Like, stop it. And I love this like cat up here that looks a little, a little perturbed. That's totally selfie. That's totally selfie. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? I love it so much. Okay, so Colors by Sue, and I want to say Colors by Sue is her Instagram name as well. Um, I'll add a link to her Instagram and her Etsy shop when I'm done here. I can't do it right now, and I really wasn't planning on like showing that, but then I decided I wanted to do some of her flowers, kind of inspired by those flowers. So, all right, so I'm going to keep her little birthday card over here as inspiration for some fun flowers. And it looks like she uses like a really tiny itty bitty brush to put in all the details on the flowers. Isn't that fun?
Tombow Extreme Adhesive on the back of my watercolor papers. And then check the card base the way it's the way it opens. So now I'm going to pick out some envelopes to go with these card designs. Um, I think black would look really great. Keyboard here now. Okay, so now I'm going to go to perfect. All right, so here's my lovely little <clears throat> Cricut design screen, right? So I already have this set up so that I can do this. So I'm just going to select this and type in each person's address. So we're starting with Laura Vance, 43701. Okay. So basically in my, let me see if I can, if I make this smaller. Okay, good. Now you guys can see it closer up. So um, what I've done is in my Cricut Design Space, I've made a rectangle that's the exact size of my envelope, which happens to be seven and one quarter by five and one quarter. And then I have the um, text that I want. And uh, when I added the text, I just changed the operation to pen. And for the pen, I selected, let's see, we're gonna go to gel. No, that really matters. It's just gonna write whatever I want. But um, for the style, I made sure that it is writing. I'm just using the Cricut Sans font. It's already in the software. It should be just fine. But I do wanna make sure that the letter spacing is retained. I want those letters kind of spaced out. All right, and I'm also going to select both of those and align them centered. Perfect, okay. So I don't want, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to select these and, oh, just kidding, I forgot one thing. This rectangle, I have the operation as basic cut. I'm not gonna cut it, I just am pretending it's like that so that I have the spacing right. Okay, I'm gonna select those two together and I'm going to attach them so they don't move around. And then I will hit make. And now I can move this around, right? So I'm actually going to move it down to about, I want this, top left corner to be two inches over and four inches down. Remember that because we're going to uh, line up the envelope in that exact spot. I'm gonna do this a couple of times because we're doing this twice, so like no big deal. All right, so now I'm going to hit continue and it says, please connect your maker. It's thinking, it's connecting. Connect please, thank you. You can select whatever cardstock you want I don't know, okay, Collect, <laughs> selecting that. It says to load the black pen, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I've got my standard grip mat and I've got my two black envelopes. I'm gonna select one. Remember I had it come down to the four and then the two at the top. I'm gonna open my envelope and I'm gonna put the top corner of where it's folded right at that spot. Get it lined up and then just press that down. This is the standard grip mat, but I've used it quite a bit, so it should pull up easily. All right, so I've got my mat ready. I'm gonna switch back to my Cricut. And I'm going to, before I even load it, hello, hi everyone, before I even load it, I have this handy dandy adapter. I actually bought it off, off Etsy. I've got a link down below. Um, and this is for the Secura Koi, not Secura Koi, just Secura Jelly Roll. You can kind of see it's got some like little letters on it and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna replace that. So I'm gonna pop out the adapter, the Cricut adapter, if I can get it out. There we go. Pop that out. I'm gonna take this one and I wanna use my jelly roll and you have to really get it in there. Okay, is it hitting the right one? I was doing it earlier and I really had to like, there we go. It has to kind of snap. I hope, you heard, I hope you heard that. Then you're gonna place it in and make sure that the top of the adapter is flush with that carriage. All right, it's all good. But we don't want it to cut around that 
rectangular envelope. So we're gonna take out the regular blade. Okay, it's gonna act like it's cutting it, but obviously there's no blade there, so it's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna load it into my Cricut. It'll load in and start thinking. And this is just magical. I'm like, are you kidding me? I love this. <laughs> All right, so it's still thinking. And then at one point, my little play button is now blinking. You can't see it, but it is blinking. So I'm gonna hit that play button. And it's going to start printing my little thing. Ooh, the bottom of the envelope caught right there. That's okay. I don't know if you can even kind of, if you can see it, but it's starting to write all of that. I love this so much. So one of the reasons why I left that rectangle and it has a basic cut on it is because I wanted it to retain the position like on the area where it was gonna go. I didn't wanna have to eyeball it. This is like magical to me. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I've seriously had this stuff to try this out for like a year. <laughs> and I finally tried it today, like an hour before going live. I'm like, oh, we have to do an envelope today. <laughs> All right, now it's gonna act like it's cutting it. It's like, okay, we've done our pen. We're gonna try to cut it. So it's gonna try to go around the outside edge. And obviously it's not gonna work because there's no bite in there. It's pretending. Da 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 da. Still pretending. Okay. I can just unload it. Ta da! Oh my word, it's magical. Okay, let me switch cameras. Okay, so you can see how well it did that. I did notice, like, when I tried this before, that the top of the letter T sometimes doesn't get written quite perfectly. So I'm actually going to kind of just finish that off a little bit. There we go. All right. And then I can peel it up from my mat. I have my envelope all ready to go. Sweet. All right. So I'm going to do that for my other envelope as well. I'm going to go ahead and get it ready on the mat. All right, I'm just gonna take my gel pen out really quick so I can put a cap on it. Cap that. I can close up my Cricut too, turn it off. All right, envelopes. And it did the same thing on that T again. Isn't that so weird? Fix that. <clears throat> just a little bit. The other tea's a little bit better. I think it's just because it's a gel pen, you know? Oh yeah, that's, that's so much better. All right, is that dry yet? I think it's okay. I'm just like trying to hide the yellow shade that was underneath. Close enough. It's getting a little squished over there, but I did it. <laughs> Got a little squished, but that's okay. I probably should have done it in two lines, so that's okay. All right, for this one, it doesn't already have the adhesive on the back. <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab a paper towel and my spray bottle, which is missing. Oh no, there it is. Okay, I'm just gonna spray into the paper towel. So I have a damp paper towel and then I can press the stamp into that damp paper towel. That will activate the adhesive. Stick 
take that down. And then I'm gonna put this yellow orchid right there. All right. So here are the two envelopes and the two cards that I completed during today's little trial one, trial run with the better press and also using a gel pen with my Cricut Maker 3. That was a lot of fun learning how to do that. Um, links for everything I've used will be down below listed in the supplies. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, for those of you who are part of my membership community here at YouTube, um, so you're paying just a few extra dollars per month for some additional content. I just want to remind you that we do have a member only live stream coming up on Thursday. It is in the evening. So I hope you can join me for that. And everyone else, you will see that video probably sometime next week or maybe on Friday. So thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.